I want to talk about philanthropy tank. High schoolers in our area have dreams of how they can make big positive changes. We've been able to grow as an organization. It's always nice to be able to contact somebody and get mentorship. Awareness to gender issues. Mental health is so incredibly important. And artistic educational inequality. Philanthropy Tank aligns really nicely to our ongoing commitment to investing in the leaders of tomorrow. Giving the opportunity for kids to share their ideas, to see them forward, and to really complete them. And that's, you know, again, for us, the exciting part of, of seeing what this can do in year two and three and four. Advancing future generations is a solid investment, and we are proud to be part of the effort. There's no question that supporting uh, diverse, inclusive, and equitable cultures and environments is at the forefront of our main themes. That's represented by our students and it's represented by the communities we've been able to support in Philanthropy Tech. Following from what my own kids had done in high school was part of the initiative to launch what we know today. Philanthropy Tank has developed hundreds of team leaders that have created sustainable programs that continue to serve our communities. Donate school supplies, community gardening, learn computer programming, female empowerment, hygiene kids, positive learning experience to underprivileged kids. When Philanthropy Tank guests are on, I say, man, if you guys are our future, we are in good <laughs> hands. Together, we are empowering change makers. Hello, how's everybody doing? Everybody feeling good? Everybody well fed? You try the tater tots, they're fantastic. All right. This is really nice. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Philanthropy Tank Finals. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Glenn Glazer. I'm a first morning meteorologist, WPBF 25 News, your favorite TV station. I'm just kidding. Your most favorite TV station. Um, this is a, a big night, not just because, of course, we have five amazing student groups here, but also a little applause for the first live event, really, since 2019 for Philanthropy Tank. It was weird, right? It was like Thanos snapped his fingers and we all disappeared for like three years and we came back. Thank you, Marvel nerds. I appreciate that. Oh my gosh, come on. So we're looking forward to a great, uh, great evening tonight. As I mentioned, we're going to hear from five student groups uh, representing issues ranging from mental health wellness to caring for our environment. But before we get to that, it is my great pleasure to kick off the festivities tonight, introducing Philanthropy Tank co-founder and board president, Evan Duell. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. Not easy to follow him, that voice and the humor. But welcome, live, year eight, Philanthropy Tank, celebrating our newest change makers and the positive impact that they're having our community. Now, it's been a long three virtual years, but we're back at our favorite place, the Kravis Center, uh, and we have a special program for you tonight. So thank you for coming out, and thank you very much for joining us. So before we get in, how about a round of applause for our alumni change makers in the lobby today. <laughs> and the impact they're having, and often the second or third generation of leaders in the programs that they were representing is pretty powerful and at the core of what we've been able to do. So first I wanna just take a moment, uh, acknowledge today is the 114th anniversary of International Women's Day, okay? And that's acknowledging the importance of the women rights movement and how far we've come and we're celebrating hashtag embrace equity this year as the theme, and it's an honor. So congratulations, and it's an honor to be able to represent and thank everybody for their support. Now, of course, none of this gets done without a village, so I want to thank our amazing sponsors, our board members, our leadership councils, the army of volunteers that really does the work throughout the year, um, and of course, our philanthropist investors maybe hanging out on the side there, that you'll get to meet very, very shortly. So we look forward to that. I also want to take a moment and thank one of Philanthropy Tank's important partners, the Volo Foundation, who established last year the Volo Green Award, which assists in the development of student programs that address and impact environmental issues. 
So tonight we've got Wendy Oliver, the director of the Volo Foundation here with us. Wendy, where are you? Can I see you? Okay, there you are, back there. Thank you for all that you do and the Volo Foundation does for us, thank you. And finally, a huge special thanks to our philanthropy tank team, our CEO over here to the right, Amy Brand. <laughs> Nakia Jones, our chief program officer, who's probably in the back with the kids. And Sarah Przanski, our marketing director. I want to acknowledge my co-founder, Michael Koner, and fellow board member. It's kind of unbelievable, right? From a dinner with Richie and Dick in June of 2015, that's, this is where we are still here today. So also I want to just acknowledge JP, Tasha, and Gary with Brand Story. And of course, Gary Cadwallader at Palm Beach Drama Works, who has provided his facility and done a tremendous amount of coaching and some meditation just a few minutes ago in the back to help prepare our students tonight that you're gonna hear and be quite impressed by. Eight years, we've witnessed a lot. And I just wanna highlight a few of the, of the accomplishments of the program, particular of the students. So let's just start, and let me mention them quickly here. In seven years, 70 student-led programs that were awarded receiving over $700,000 in, in grant awards. 1,000 students have participated in these programs over the years and have impacted over 300,000 lives. The areas of impact include arts and culture, health, human services, environmental, and education. And you saw a sampling of that here today, and you'll hear more about that tonight. But the next two items are the things that really move me, and I think Michael, as we thought about this program almost eight years ago. 40% of the programs that were started have achieved their own 501c3 status as of today. And this isn't really about us, this is all about the change makers, it really is. And then the statistic that I think we're most proud of is today, two thirds of every program that's been started over the seven years is still operating, making sustainable impact in the community today. <clears throat> Please celebrate our change makers tonight. Thank you again for joining us. As we like to say, let's jump into the tank. Well, as we've said multiple times, we have not had the opportunity to be in person. And so I would be remiss not to thank Evan for his leadership and for uh, his impact in all the students' lives. We so appreciate all your support. And so we wanted to give this just to commemorate the day. And then also, if we could have Michael come and join us as the co-founder. Congratulations. Thank you so much for your support and leadership again. This was an idea that they had eight years ago, and we're so excited to see the growth, and we're really elated to see the students tonight. There's a lot of energy, and we're so um, happy that you could join us. It's a beautiful crowd, so we're going to get ready for the show. We're going to bring up our philanthropist investors. Donald M. Bird is currently executive vice president and chief marketing and procurement officer for TBC Corporation, which includes Tire Kingdom, Big O Corporation, Midas, and representing a total revenue of about $5 billion. Prior to TBC Corporation, Don spent 10 years at Michelin and 19 years at Procter & Gamble, increasing brand management across several billion dollar brands. Don is representing the Honda Classic and Honda Classic Cares. Hi, Don. <laughs> Deborah Elmore. Deborah is founder of AK Consulting, a business consulting firm she started after working 20 plus years in corporate America. Deborah has served on several nonprofit boards, including the Palm Beach County Cultural Council, Bethesda Hospital Foundation, Delray Beach Public Library, and Philanthropy Tank. <laughs> Chatty Irani. Chatty serves as the Regional Vice President of Advertising at Local IQ, the marketing arm of the USA Today Network, and of course includes the Palm Beach Post, Palm Beach Daily News, and TC Palm Locally. Chatty and his team help businesses, nonprofits, and organizations tell their stories to the people who need them. And in the process, they fund daily local journalism that keeps citizens informed, protected, and entertained. Chatty is here representing the Palm Beach Post. 
Tom Vining. Tom served as the president for Otis Elevator of Americas. Prior to leading the Americas operation, Tom held key leadership roles at Otis, including president of Otis China, Otis Korea, and director for Hong Kong and Taiwan. Tom retired from Otis Elevator in 2020 and is now performing consulting for private equity clients. He is a member of the Philanthropy Tank Leadership Council and an avid community volunteer. So the way we're gonna do the program tonight is throughout the evening, Philanthropy Tank alumni will introduce tonight's finalists. Please welcome alumna Amelia Williams. Hello everyone, my name is Amelia Williams, and last year I was awarded $10,500 in funding for my program, Green Garments. Green Garments is a program that aims to change the way consumers buy, think, and feel about the clothes they wear through education and hands-on training. It is my honor to introduce one of this year's finalists, Endgame Education. Hello everyone, my name is Maya Buhura. I'm in 10th grade at American Heritage Palm Beach and my project is Endgame Education. I've been playing chess since I was three years old and over the past more than a decade, I've seen firsthand how chess has evolved in Palm Beach County. From what I've seen, overall chess instruction has been widely inaccessible and very expensive. As a result, I created Endgame Education, a free, remote, and accessible chess instruction service for elementary school, public school students in Palm Beach County. Out of everything that you could tutor, why chess? Studies have shown that chess allows students to develop their memory, attention span, help them develop their confidence, and studies even show that standardized test scores in reading and math have improved drastically in students that learn chess. I've seen how all of these aspects have improved in my own life after learning chess, but more importantly, from the extensive feedback that we've heard from parents, we've seen how their own students have been able to learn how to focus better in school, how their grades have improved drastically, and how they've been able to find their confidence and go out of their comfort zone after learning chess at Endgame Education. In Endgame Education, high school volunteer tutors are teaching elementary school public school students in Palm Beach County how to learn chess over remote platforms such as Zoom or Google Meet. This allows us to have an accessible but immensely profound impact on all of our students. So far in the six months that we've started to implement this program, we've had over 40 students, 13 tutors, and have done over 250 lessons, showing the great demand that chess has had and will continue to have in Palm Beach County. For our budget, I'm asking for $10,000. Part of the budget will go towards chess sets and accessories needed for our lessons to continue. I also wanna to continue to do free tournaments and free workshops so that we're able to allow the students in our organization and even students outside of our organization to accessibly take their skills to the next level through these tournaments and workshops. I also wanna be able to provide more quality resources to our tutors and students that they may not be able to have the opportunity to otherwise have or be able to get on their own to even still take their skills to the next level. So, what is our end game? We wanna be able to partner with schools and community-based programs to be able to extend our impact to more students. We also wanna be able to host those free tournaments and workshops for our students to help them to continue to grow their skills and also be able to get those resources that they may not otherwise be able to have. Thank you, do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank you for what you're doing for the game uh, here of chess, and I, great job. Uh, I, you mentioned 13 tutors so far that you have. Uh, what's the goal? How, how many you would like to have? How you're hiring tutors? And by the end of the year, where do you would like to see how many students impacted by this program? So far, our tutors have been also coming from Palm Beach County High Schools. Those that I already know would do a good job tutoring and have already had chess experience. So far, our goal is to increase to around 30 to 35 tutors by the end of the year and even continue to expand in future years. Most of our tutors are doing one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one, and even group lessons, so that doesn't have as much of an impact on the students that we would be able to impact. But yes, our goal is around 30 tutors by the end of this year. That's awesome. And, and do you have certain age groups that you're going to be targeting or certain schools that you're going after? 
Yes, our primary demographic is elementary school students in public schools in Palm Beach County. So, so far, that is the main demographic that we've been targeting, especially since standardized test scores have been drastically decreasing in the third, fourth, and fifth grade levels. So th that's who we're targeting. And so how will you or intend to measure the impact or kind of see the effectiveness with so, the students? So far as we've been implementing the program, most of what we've been measuring has been more qualitative through the parents' feedback of how their student has been improving in school and getting better grades. However, through potential funding and philanthropy tank mentorship, when we partner with schools, we want to be able to make our metrics more quantitative and look at those standardized test scores for the students that we're impacting or even just their normal test scores in the classroom to see how much of an impact that we're having on their academic lives. You mentioned tournaments. Uh, have you done the studies on how much it's going to cost? I know there's a lot of tournaments that happen around chess. Is this something that you want to establish on your own or partner with existing clubs or uh, tournaments? We want to be able to establish our own. Uh, we've already partnered with tournament organizations to host tournaments in the past, but after the one-time cost th in our budget through software and other things needed to be able to host a tournament, we'll be able to host those more accessible tournaments for many years in the future and impact a lot of students. Will That's you host awesome. those tournaments live or virtual? They would be mostly live in mm -hmm. schools and other community programs that would be more accessible for students to be able to come to in person. We also do want to host more virtual tournaments for those that aren't able to make it and have to stay at home. Thanks. Okay. Great job. Thank you. Good job. Now joining us, Nestor Flores. Our program began around 2019. Little Angels Tutoring is a free tutoring service for underprivileged children. Uh, we operate at El Sol near Jupiter, and we also teach them Taekwondo and chess. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our next finalist, Hoax with Heart. Good evening. My name is Donna Cornish. Good evening. My name is Sanai Newby. And hi, my name is Anna Johnson, and we are Hoax with Heart. We are a crochet club at Atlantic Community High, a Title I school located in Derrick Beach, Florida. Our mission at Hooks to Heart is to improve mental health, build human connection through the art of crochet, and to be of service to others. What's the problem? Well, the problem is that one in three high schoolers, that's 37%, have reported poor mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. Anywhere in that statistic, the LGBTQIA can and is included. I personally also have ADHD and anxiety, and I know how it feels to be alone at, with myself and with my hand shaking to where I can barely pick up a pencil. But that's where crochet comes in. Why crochet? Crochet helps with anxiety, depression, and connectedness. Our goal at Hooks for Heart is to acquire a new skill and build a community. And we want to create projects to sustain our club. And we do this by meeting weekly in a welcoming classroom environment. We plan to keep our club up and running by continuing to attend community events with the Malago Center, where they give us an opportunity to raise money for kids in developing countries in Education Rocks, starting with $1 a day. We are asking for $12,500, $6,000 going to materials like yarn, hooks, Tunisian hooks, and sometimes sewing needles, $4,500 for marketing, we would like to place some vinyl posters up around our school to advertise ourselves some more because word is not just gonna get out about us, it also needs to be representation. And $1,000 for snacks because the kids, they love cookies and donuts, so we would like to give snacks to them. Thank you for your time and do you have any questions? Well, you did a great job, so. Um... And it looks like you already have your program going a little bit in school. Do you have um, the support of some of the faculty or um, people at school that are helping you with this project? Yes, we do. Um, so a lot of my teachers, whenever they see me crocheting, a lot of them have asked me, where are you guys crocheting? Or how are you guys doing this? How does it start up? And um, we have had a few faculty, they've wanted to come in and come help us crochet. They've had their family want us to want to come in and help us crochet. So we have a lot of support from our faculty and from our peers. 
That's awesome. It's amazing what you're doing, bringing communities together and folks to help each other and being there, supporting each other from that perspective. Uh, have you identified the clubs where the location is going to be to host these so sessions? our location right now, we are at Atlantic Community High School. It's in Delray. And we're in our avid teacher, Ms. Lewis's classroom. Um, sometimes we can switch around rooms, especially if the teachers wants to host the club in their rooms. But right now, permanently, we're in Ms. Lewis's classroom. Are your supplies provided by the three of you, your group, or the participants? Um, the, supply, the participants could also bring their supplies because <clears> the participants <throat> are also like already working on their projects. Mm -hmm. Like we have a lot of participants. Some made hats like that. Mm -hmm. Some made flowers. Um, but we also do bring in materials. Um, we've spent money on hooks for the kids because obviously mm -hmm. that's one of the core things we need. And we've also spent money for yarn and needles and eyes for things like that. And I'm curious, so how large is your group today? And how, what's your ambition in terms of the size that you're trying to accomplish with the, with the budget um, that you're asking for? So right now we have over 100 kids uh, joining mm -hmm. in Crochet Club. And it only grows larger as they start to talk about it. Um, we've seen a few kids with uh, crochet hats or crochet bags. Some kids are already selling their stuff. Um, I know some kids have AirPod cases that they made and we're just growing and growing. And because we're doing our, um, our fundraising, we're going to have more money to give to the kids to buy yarn and buy hooks and everything. And we also plan to, in the, like in the future, we plan to take our club to the Milagro Center where we can help kids there with their mental health. How do you plan on um, in tracking the mental health improvement of your participants? So we have um, school counselors where we do mm -hmm. talk to them. I know a lot of my friends, they talk to them too because they're mm -hmm. like, we need somebody to talk to who's not our parents, mm -hmm. who we don't feel will have a bias against us. We also mm -hmm. let the kids talk to us, especially because it's, it's good to have someone to connect to and mm -hmm. it's good to have someone to feel s safe with. So we also let the kids talk to us and if there's anything concerning, like really concerning that we need to report, we will report it. Thank you. That's great. You did Thank a great you. job. A lot of potential, so Thank fantastic. You. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Let's welcome Dua Ali for our next group. Come on up, Dua. Hi, my name is Dua Ali, and my program, Bridging the Gap, was started in 2022. Bridging the Gap was meant to supplement an existing club at our school called Empowering Youth Action, which provided tutoring services to Title I schools in our county during COVID. With Bridging the Gap, we have been able to not only expand this program, but provide material supplies to those partner schools. It is now my pleasure to introduce the next group, Caring for a Change. Hi, my name is Erica Frischberg. And I'm Jacob Carrion, and we are both 10th graders at Olympic Heights High School, and we are Caring for a Change. In Palm Beach County, there's a huge problem. And that is that 46% of Palm Beach County elementary school students do not read proficiently. And because of this, 23% of non-proficient readers will not graduate high school by the age of 19. And this could all be solved because statistics show that kids who read 20 minutes a day are more likely to score better than 90% of their non-reading peers. And this is the point of our club, Hearing for a Change. So we are high school heroes changing lives through audiobooks. One thing that made us fall in love with doing this idea was me and Jacob both struggled with reading at a young age. And one thing that helped us a lot was reading. And one thing we want to help our struggling readers with is building their vocabulary, their comprehension, and their love for books. For example, the kid sticking out his tongue looks like maybe someone that doesn't want to participate or have no fun. But for example, he was our strongest reader and had so much fun and was so sad when we told him that our club wasn't continuing this year anymore. Our program is already started at Hammock Point Elementary School with 10 buddies, and we have 15 active Olympic Heights students that go to elementary school every day on Thursday for an hour. We've already read 1,095 pages, and we also train our high schoolers on how to pick engaging books and make sure the kids know what to read. Our one-year goals include expanding our Hearing for a Change Club to four Palm Beach County high schools and elementary schools. This makes for a total of five Hearing for a Change clubs across Palm Beach County. Along with that, our five clubs hope to have over 80 elementary school buddies. How we will sustain our club in the future is we will have underclassmen leadership roles. 
where we will teach them how the club works and inside info in order for them to hopefully carry on the club when Eric and I go away in two years to college. Our budget is $12,500, and we will use this for a computer and web hosting where we will be able to communicate with our future presidents in other schools, along with keeping track of the data for hopefully our over 80 kids. Along with that, we will also be asking for incentives, um, which we will use in order to help motivate the kids in order to read. And lastly, we will also be spending the money on audiobooks and Love Buds, which <coughs> will help the kids stay focused. And you may be asking, what are Love Buds? Well, Love Buds are these hearing uh, headphones that allow for two, two people to listen in at the same time, basically be plugged in without any distractions, because it oftentimes gets loud when people are talking, and it helps them focus overall. Thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? So, so what a big need in, in our school system that you're trying to address. I mean, that's great. What's been the reception at the, the school you've worked with so far from both the kids and um, the administration of the school you're working with? Have you been well received? Yeah, so originally, um, the, the administration has been great to us at Hammock Point. They've been really supportive and they've been able to basically get us into the club, start our club right away and stay there for an hour. They've been really lenient about that especially because kids are in aftercare, and sometimes they're on a schedule and it's very tight. Um, along with that, the kids at first, we did a little bit of like a survey with them, and a lot of the kids did not like reading at first, but over time, we've given them a survey at the end of the year, which was two, three weeks ago, and they started loving books, and their attitudes have completely changed as well. Like Erica mentioned before, the, um, the kid who was sticking out his tongue, at first he hated reading, but now he's our best reader. Yeah. Very, very impressive uh, work so far. <laughs> Can you explain the body system, how it works? One of the picture was, uh, it looked like uh, a body working with a student. Is it a one-on-one -on -one or one-to-many approach? So we do do one-on-one, -on -one, but also some of our high schoolers are a little nervous with working one-on-one. -on -one, so we do actually have a group of three high schoolers working with one buddy. And also it is good sometimes that we do implement to high schoolers because high schoolers also have a busy life. And it's really annoying because sometimes they don't show up. But we luckily <laughs> have at least 15 active members. And that's why we have only 10 at our elementary school since we always know to have people. We're never ever being like, oh, who's gonna go with this person? Always someone has a buddy, and we make sure their buddies are someone that they know so they can engage with them and not just be like, who are you? I don't know you, and stuff like that. Got it, thank you. How do you monitor the results of your audiobook and then for the student then to go to the next level of the next audiobook? Um, we have reading logs, which you might have mm -hmm. hated when you were younger, but mm -hmm. we use them to, at, once we start the meeting, we write down the book that we're reading, and we write mm -hmm. how many pages we've read, and how many pages, if they read any by their own. Because we do encourage mm -hmm. them to read on their own at home, because that's how you get to learn. It's not just, we mm -hmm. want them to read for an hour and then go home and do nothing. We encourage them to read at home, and especially with the incentives, we say if you read 20 pages at home, you get two mini erasers, which everyone loves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Incentive. Uh, incentives, yeah. Good. Thank you. How, what, what's your plan? How will you recruit more buddies? What, what's that process? Because it seems like that will be a key dependent on how many people you can serve. Um, at the beginning of the year, at almost every high school, uh, there's a club rush where clubs from all over the place basically like stay at lunch and they basically, the kids walk around and they interview us kind of, where they act, ask us questions like what's our club about, what do we do, what do we hope to do in the future, and oh, like during Club Rush, we got a lot of members, but eventually, like unfortunately not everyone could s show up every week, so we only have 15 currently, but how we will expand in the future is I have many outlets social-wise, and we also have a board position in our club for recruiting people, where people who, like the popular sort of kids, get to basically go out and basically be like, hey, this is this is their club. You guys want to join? Great. Yeah. And how about partner organizations? Have you th thought about that yet at all? Or I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, we have contacted Playaway, which is an auditory book system. Actually, if you go into your libraries, you can find them. And we tried contacting them, but they weren't as lenient. So that's why we're hoping that Philanthropy Tank will help us with their mentorship, with your mentorship, to help us contact more places and help us be able to grow in that way. Great. All right. Awesome. Thank you, investors. Thank you. Our next alumna is Marina Barto of Surface 71.
Good evening, everybody. My name is Marina Barto, and I'm the president of the student-led nonprofit, Surface 71. After getting funded in year three by Philanthropy Tank, we were able to host monthly beach cleanups, install water refill stations in area schools, and educate youth on how to reduce plastics in their daily lives. Now that you know a little bit about us, it's my pleasure to introduce our next finalist, Down to Earth. Earth is nothing but a speck in the vacuum of space. All of humanity is on that pale blue dot. Our spaceship Earth is our one and only life support system. There is no planet B. However, climate change jeopardizes that. With increasing global temperatures and rising sea levels, our spaceship Earth is being sabotaged by its own passengers. My name is Daisy, and I am a junior at Dreyfus School of the Arts. My project, Down to Earth, seeks to educate fifth grade students in Palm Beach County about climate change through viewing science on a sphere. As Palm Beach County residents, we live in an area vulnerable to climate change impacts from sea level rise to stronger hurricanes. By 2040, the Southeast Florida sea level is projected to rise 10 to 17 inches above the mean, especially in a time of misinformation and denial. Awareness is our first and most crucial step towards mitigating climate change. However, climate change is hard to grasp. It's a slow, long-term problem that doesn't necessarily impact our day-to-day -day lives. After viewing Earth from space, astronauts return home with a cognitive shift known as the overview effect, where they often claim how stunning, small, and fragile our Earth is. Although we can't experience that for ourselves, science on a sphere provides a similar bird's eye view of Earth, just like how astronauts see it. Down to Earth seeks to improve Palm Beach County's environmental literacy by making climate change education accessible and digestible. By funding for a free mini curriculum that culminates to viewing science on a sphere in a field trip, students will experience a three-dimensional perspective of the Earth that visualizes climate change and introduces potential solutions. This curriculum will teach what the traditional education system lacks, hopefully prompting discussions between children and parents and sparking climate change advocacy in our county for a greener future. I am asking for a total of $14,800 for bus rental fees, <clears throat> science center emissions fees, and curriculum materials in order to spread science on a sphere education to students countywide. In order to sustain this program into the future, I will be contacting corporate sponsors and also underclassmen who would be interested in taking on this project when I graduate. This mini curriculum will span for less than a week, starting out with a short pretest, then going into the lesson, and then finally the science on a sphere field trip, and then ending with a short post-test. I will continually work with the pretest and post-test data in order to gauge the efficacy of this curriculum and modify if needed. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. With Down to Earth, we will educate one student at a time and help save our precious planet Earth. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. You can uh, feel your passion on this, on this topic and on, on this project. What's been the feedback from the, any schools that you've kind of reached out to about this curriculum in, in terms of their acceptance? Um, so this project is still in development. It hasn't been. Um, out in the community yet, but I hope that with Philanthropy Tank's help, we will initiate that very soon. I have done something like this um, with FEU's Pine Jog Climate Ready Ambassadors Program, and um, I believe many schools and after-school programs were happy to welcome this curriculum into their education. How do you plan on transporting the students to the Science Museum through the school system? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is with um, school bus rentals, mm -hmm. and that was included in my fees, um, mm -hmm. in my budget as a pretty large percentage because it is quite costly mm -hmm. right now. But yes, I believe um, we will be using school buses. Do you have a contact in the school system to help you with getting that? I have that attempted doing through? that so far. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But they said that because I was a student, I wasn't able to access this information, but I have been mm -hmm. trying to reach out to my teachers in order to see if mm -hmm. they could ask about it for me. However, mm -hmm. I know that Philanthropy Tank does have some um, connections within the school district, so I hope to access those. <laughs> so I hope to access those once this Goodness. gets an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. W wonderful presentation. Mm. Thank you for this. Uh, so, uh, parallel to this question, like, have you had any conversation with the Science Center? Have you reached out to them at all as to how they can help facilitate this experience, basically, for the students? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I have contacted the Cox Science Center so far, um, and they haven't really um, established any sort of connection with this program yet because it is still under development. Um, the mm -hmm. field trip fees are still their standard field trip fees. However, I hope um, to further work on something with them, maybe a project, because I know that they also have sustainability goals to possibly lower this, these costs. And, and are you getting other student volunteers from your school or different schools? What's your plan for that? Um, they will be student volunteers from uh, many different high schools across Palm Beach County. I was a part of this program called Climate Ready Ambassadors, and I hope, on, I hope to reach out to those ambassadors because I know that they are very passionate about this cause. So they will be great to work with. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. To introduce our last finalist group, is the first year awardee, Caitlin Macias. Good evening, everyone. My name is Caitlin Macias, and I'm a year one awardee for the program I co-founded, Equal and Empowered, dedicated to promoting feminism and equality among youth in Palm Beach County. After Philanthropy Tank, I attended college, and I started a national youth program against human trafficking and sexual exploitation. And I've also worked for a lot of different nonprofits, like the Community Foundation for Palm Beach and, Pro and Martin Counties. Today, I'm really fortunate to be able to work with kids against adversity and trauma at the Center for Child Counseling, where I'm now interning, hey Emily, as a child trauma therapist. So I'm super excited about inspiring the next generation of change makers from the small kids that I inspire every day to all of these amazing program groups. And I'd like to introduce the last group, Tata for now, to give their final presentation. Thank you. My name is Jessie Baxter, and I'm so excited to talk to you about our project, Tata -ta For Now. Hi, I'm Holly Milsom, and we both attend Jupiter Community High School. And there is a problem affecting our peers in Palm Beach County, and we know how to fix it. Clothing insecurity is not new, but the need to tell this story is. Not having clean clothing can affect the ability to learn, impacts grades, confidence, and how she interacts with her peers. Spending the most of a paycheck on food and shelter leaves little money for anything else, especially clean and good quality bras and underwear. There's a gap in services provided by charities and donations in that this need is overlooked. Our project addresses a way to assist low-income girls in our community, and we need to empower them and gain their confidence. This inspiration arose when we started traveling around our county for competitive soccer. And when we competed against girls from underserved areas, we noticed unfitting undergarments, or none at all, showing obvious discomfort. Sports should be an equalizer, but not having the correct fitting or comfortable bra and underwear can be a prohibiting factor undermining a girl's confidence playing a sport she loves, just as it would sitting behind a school desk. Behind me, this map shows the pink and purple colors indicating homeless students in our county in which these girls live. Our project's main focus is on adolescent girls in Palm Beach County who are clothing insecure. And we aim to empower these girls who do not have clean underwear or a bra that fits. And they struggle to get dressed for school every day. And when they are in school, they are more likely to endure bullying, suffering from low self-esteem. By high school, this can lead to more dropouts, suffering from long-term economic, social, and emotional consequences. And this cycle continues. And these are some ways we have implemented our project into the community which includes partnering with organizations, for instance, Adopt a Family. For sustainability, we have a lively school club that supports and encourages this effort. We also have a social media platform to inform our followers about collection drives happening around the community and to also gather crucial donations of bras and underwear. This platform is also critical to reach volunteers interested in contributing to our organization. Our school club also writes meaningful handwritten notes and letters to teenage girls in temporary homes or foster care, not only giving the physical bras and underwear. This club allows our project to stay around years after we graduate, moving underclassmen up in our positions and training them to take over. And we differ from other organizations because we are teenage girls ourselves and we relate with them, going through some of the same challenges. As for our proposed budget, most is allocated toward outreach that is much needed to raise awareness of this urgent crisis. Respectfully, we're asking for materials, school club expenses, and shipping. 
This will support our long-term funding efforts. Our club is also a certified 501c3 organization set up to help girls for decades to come. Thank you so much, you're not taking much. Thank you, Jesse and Holly. Um, question for you, with the funding that you're requesting, what's the most important piece that you would utilize first if you would receive the money? Yeah, so I think it'd be the outreach. So either we'd be on social media or in our school or just in our community, we really want to get our idea out there. Have you identified the, the, how many young women you would be helping uh, during your first year? Yeah, so our goal is to give out 10,000 pairs of bras and underwear and help about 5,000 to 6,000 girls. So far, we've reached 200. And do you have a sense for what organizations you're going to do, use to outreach to those girls? Yes, so we have used Adopt a Family, and therefore they've given it directly to the girls. Have you thought about how you might have to manage uh, inventory? That's, a, that's, a, that's an ambitious goal. Do you need storage, or how, how would you handle that? Yeah, so we, right now we are um, interested in clearing out like a warehouse or something like that, like an AC, to keep it clean for the girls. That's awesome. Good job. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you. Now the hard part for you guys. We're gonna let our philanthropist investors go ahead and deliberate, figure out what they're gonna do. We have a nice little kids table set up for you right over there, you guys can just crowd around that. And in the meantime, we're gonna invite up Bill Meyer, our founding philanthropist investor. Good luck, PIs. Bill has uh, obviously a unique perspective on this because he has done this so much. What do you think our, our PIs are doing back there? What is their thought process right now? One of the things that everyone should be aware of is that the grantees who get a, a gift from one of the philanthropists, not only do they get money, but they get mentorship. So for the next 12 months, one of these philanthropists, if they like a particular project, will work with them over the next 12 months to improve their project, to make it more successful. And that mentorship is invaluable for what they're trying to accomplish. When I was sitting over there listening, I was trying to think every single aspect of each idea that came up, I was like, oh, that's good, oh, that's good, oh, that's good. How do you sort of zone in, hone in on, on what key aspects the, the PIs are looking at? Well, what's happening now is each of them will have a particular interest. For example, one of the philanthropists may be a chess player. So that would be particularly interesting to that individual. Obviously, uh, the, the Tata, women with respect to bras and underwear would be very much on the mind of a female philanthropist. When you look at the mental health, the crocheting uh, would address a mental health issue. So depending upon the particular subject that any one of those philanthropists may have an interest in, uh, if you're in one of them may be an environmentalist, so they would be particularly interested in focusing on the program that would take place at the Science Center. So their particular interest and what they may have expertise in mentoring will have an effect on how much money they may want to give to each of the presenters and which presenters they'd like to mentor over the next 12 months. A lot of us know uh, we have children, friends, children who have struggled to read too, so we know of course, that program would be fantastic for, for kids needing to learn how to read as well. Let's invite up Mallory Thomas, the founder of Gnome. You were in this position last year. Um, what, do you think, what do you think all the, the kids back there are feeling right now? Definitely a lot of celebration. That something that they've been putting a lot of work towards the last three to four months, over. But they're still waiting to see how much money they actually receive and who will be offering that money. So, celebration, anxiety still in the corner. A little relief after having been standing on stage and presenting in front of three, 400 people? Yeah, just, just a casual thing that everyone does. Yeah, yeah, it's like a daily occurrence. When the kids are, are thinking about their funding and they're thinking about the investors, um, do, do they always expect to get everything they need? Are they hoping to just get a little something? Like what, what, how were you thinking when, you, when, you were, when they were over there deliberating? I was hoping our project to get the, the, the amount we asked for. Of course, that's not always what happens, but it's great to receive any funding for sure. And the mentorship component, like Bill was saying, was a really big aspect of what made our project GNOME so successful over the last year. 
Can you tell me a little bit about GNOME real quick, in case people are unfamiliar with GNOME? So GNOME stands for Growing Native Oases Made for Engagement. And it's all about bringing community gardens uh, to Palm Beach County and having high schoolers be involved with the creation of those gardens. So teaching gardening skills and giving volunteer hours, of course. Thank you, Bill and Mallory. We appreciate it. Welcome to the stage now, Philanthropy Tank CEO, Amy Brand. Thank you. Isn't he doing a great job, Glenn? Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. As we've mentioned a few times, it is our eight years of developing youth leaders that are creating great impact in our community. And we're so proud to have many of those students here with us tonight. Many of our students after graduating, some of them go on to higher education, some of them go into the armed services, some of them go directly into the workforce. But many of our alumni now have gone through their different paces of high school and are contributing to their communities. And many of them have decided to become peer mentors. So we're really fortunate tonight to have Noah Rubin with us, who's home from spring break. Uh, we met Noah when he was just an eighth grader, and he's now a sophomore at University of Pennsylvania doing great things in his community. So we asked Noah to join us tonight and just reflect on his philanthropy tank experiences. So here's Noah. Thank you so much, Amy. Before I start what I was planning on saying, Amy has been an amazing CEO for Philanthropy Tank, so please let's give it up again for her. I wanted to just um, tell you guys a little bit about my experience with Philanthropy Tank. Um, it wasn't necessarily a conventional one, but I learned so much through this program. I actually applied for the first time as a seventh grader. Um, and if you heard um, what Amy said is that the philanthropy tank met me as an eighth grader. So I applied, I didn't get it. And then I applied again and I got it. It was such an amazing experience to be on this stage and pitching and it made such a huge impact for me. Um, and being in the audience tonight, I was so inspired by the amazing projects that we saw here. Um, they are already making an amazing impact in our community and it's so great to see what will come in the future from them. Obviously, Everybody's pitching for a big check at the end, which is a super exciting part of tonight. Um, but I personally, our project CanCode has gotten so much more out of Philanthropy Tank than just the initial funding that we received. Um, of course, without the funding, we would not have been able to expand our project. For context, we teach um, computer programming to underserved elementary schoolers. And because of Philanthropy Tank's big donation, we were able to serve more than 500 students to date. Um, I was the first president and founder, and now we're on our third president. We've had dozens of teachers impacting students at lots of different centers, um, but that was not only because of the funding, that was also because of the mentorship that I received from my amazing um, philanthropist investor, Mr. John Scarpa, as well as my coach, who's here tonight, Miss Mary Ellen Gore. Um, so big round of applause for the mentorship. Also amazing professional development workshops where I learned all about marketing, public speaking, how to engage and how to get other students passionate about what I'm passionate about, and just overall amazing um, connections in the community through Philanthropy Tank. They were able to help me so much. Um, and of course, those skills that I learned through CanCode and through Philanthropy Tank, I've taken with me um, to school and I will continue to take them for the rest of my life. So I just wanted to thank everybody so much for coming and hear these amazing presenters and for supporting them in whatever way you are, whether you're a parent or a friend or a volunteer. It means so much to us as the presenters to know that there are other people excited about what we work so hard on. Thank you all for being here tonight and can't wait to hear the results. That's awesome, thanks Noah. Give a hand for Noah, isn't he great? Such an amazing student. So Philanthropy Tank will continue to empower and inspire our teens. That's what our future is all about. And we're excited for these programs, but we're asking for your support tonight because we want to continue to reach future change makers. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that through an expanded curriculum, outreach efforts that allow us to work on site and interactively with students who attend Title I schools. So in order to do that and to reach some students that might not be aware of the philanthropy tank opportunity, we need your support. So by the support, we're gonna be able to identify and mentor even more change makers. 
Uh, we have currently received about $20,000 in gifts towards our support for this evening, and we're hoping tonight that we will match that. So we're asking for your support. On your tables is a QR code, so you can scan that code with your phone and make a donation to Philanthropy Tank. If you'd prefer not to do the phone, we have pledge cards that you can fill out as well and make a donation, and our students will be by your table to pick up your envelopes. We want to thank you in advance for your generosity. We should state that we have no dedicated stream of funds for our projects. The funds that we are allocating tonight are through community gifts, through foundations, through grants, through individual contributors and donors that have helped support us, that are allowing us to be able to make these contributions to launch these nonprofit programs. So we want to thank you for your support. And now let me welcome back to the stage Glenn Glazer. All right. Let's welcome back our philanthropist investors. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna welcome each group back to the stage and we'll go through the program that way, good? All right, let's <coughs> welcome back to the stage, Endgame. So hey, Maya, great job, great presentation tonight. And uh, uh, really thank you for the, what you're doing for the game of chess. Uh, I can definitely attest to how it's getting more popular around elementary uh, uh, kids, and I think uh, what you're doing here is uh, outstanding. And I would love the opportunity to mentor you and invest in this program. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, fund your project with $6,000 uh, to help. And I also found your presentation very compelling. I'm a chess fan myself, and my children play chess, so I also want to contribute $2,000. All right. Thank you. So basically, we're funding your project with $8,000. Congrats, Maya. There you go. Trust me. Thank you. Good job. Oh, here, I feel like I should give you the mic to say something. I was like edging over. Thank you so much, everyone. This is a great opportunity, and I can't wait to continue to expand and improve and impact more students in the future. Thank you. All right. So awesome. Next up, Hooks with Heart. Hi. So the three of you did a great job t tonight. Um, and mental health is such an important topic. Uh, you know, has been more so in the past couple of years. Um, and I love the progress you've made so far in your school, so I'd like to be your mentor, and um, I'd like to fund you for $3,500. I would also like to um, fund you for $2,000. And I think this is a real important subject, so I also want to fund for $2,250. I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump in here as well with another $1,250. Great job. So, so that, that's a, a total funding of $9,000, and I look forward to working with you. Oh. Uh, uh. There you go. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. It is such an honor. Thank you guys so much for helping us bring this to life. Thank you guys so much. Um, I want to thank my teachers and my family and all the supporters. Thank you. Congratulations. Great. Next up, Hearing for a Change. So we found that you know this is such a critical need in the school system. You know you have a, a great plan to you know not do it just in in one school, but a lot of schools. So we congratulate that you for that. I'd like to be your uh, mentor, and I would like to contribute six thousand dollars to your program. I would like to add an extra fifteen hundred dollars to your program. And I also would like to add to your program, so I'll add 
I, I will be doing the same as well with another 1250. Good job, guys. So, so that's a total of $10,000. And again, I look forward to, to working with you and congratulations. Thank you so much for the mentorship and this opportunity is going to help us so much. Thank you so much for everything. Congratulations. Now, down to earth. Daisy, you're a force of one. <laughs> and I love your perspective in terms of change and create the conversation on climate. I'd like to be your mentor and I'd like to contribute $6,000. Thank you. Uh, I totally see the vision and thank you again for an amazing presentation and important topic. Uh, I would like to also jump in with $3,000. Thank you. And I would like to additionally add $1,000 to your project. Thank you so much. So with that, we'd like to in total give you $10,000 to get this off the ground. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. I'm really, really just overfilled with gratitude and this is like so amazing. I can't wait to get this program started with all the help. All right. And our final group, Tata for now. Jesse and Holly, I'm excited to let you know that I will be your mentor and I'd like to offer you $7,500 to start off. And I thought you did a great job, too. I'm going to add an additional $2,500 to your project. So you have a total funding of $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing opportunity, and we are just so grateful to receive this. So thank you. Just as thank you, too. Congratulations, of course, to all of our amazing students. Thank you to our philanthropist investors. Thank you all for coming tonight. We appreciate it. That's going to end our program. Have a great night, and we'll see you next year. Thank you, guys.